Good day, you're speaking with Nasser Carstens from PSG Wealth. I'll be taking you to the Richmond FY22 results. So we saw our FY22 results come up. We saw a strong top line consensus beat with revenue growth of 46%. However, we did see a bottom line miss, which did cause the sharp uh, sell off on open. Our key takeaways were the EPS miss, which, which was primarily caused due to currency and investment uh, movements. We saw strong margin improvements due to operating leverage recovery, which has returned the, to the pre-pandemic operating model. We saw fairly good Asia-Pacific growth despite heavy Chinese lockdowns. E-commerce inro inroads into China were made. We saw uh, good efforts on Rishma's part to penetrate the underpenetrated Chinese luxury and hard luxury market. Hard luxury does remain a concern for us in the region. In terms of valuation, we saw a multiple adjustment, or we made a multiple adjustment from 15.1 to 12.8 times. Due to pent up demand unwinding, we do not see this uh, happening again in the near future. We revise our intrinsic value to 159 Rand versus a current price of 174 Rand. This implies a downside of 8.5% and we recommend a hold. We saw our FY22 results coming out, uh, which caused a large sell off due to the bottom line miss. The miss was primarily due to a far fetched investment write down of 45% during the year, as well as 100 and 94 million in currency movements. The market reaction was quite quite sharp considering the miss off of a fairly high base and revenue beat and also considering that the normalized earnings number would have beat beat consensus. We saw a Alibaba partnership, e-commerce partnership uh, and then the far-fetched investment uh, which is obvious pathway into the Chinese market. However, Richmond is still lagging soft luxury peers which see very high growth in, in China. In terms of our financials, uh, Richmond saw very strong growth in the uh, Americas and, and North, um, North American segment, as you can see in this bottom table. Uh, Richmond demonstrated strong operational leverage with EBIT growth of 129% coming from a 46% sales growth. Far-fetched convertible notes were written down by 45% and this along with a currency downward adjustment or downward movement of 194 million euros during the year was the, were the primary reasons for the bottom line miss. The Chinese contribution to sales was difficult to analyze due to lockdowns. Uh, we had 100 out of the 250 Chinese stores closed during the period and we saw um, fairly strong uh, uh, lockdowns uh, across most most of the period. There's still, or there is still a strong substantial uh, goodwill uh, of goodwill amount on the balance sheet of about 3.5 billion euros. This does pose a further risk. Should this be written down, we can expect further sensitivity on the share price as long as we have the same uh, high systematic risk that we're currently seeing. In terms of valuation, this graph just shows you our EV EBITDA multiple over the past 20 years. That dark blue line to your right hand side would be the five year average, which you can see is definitely elevated over the 13 year average. We chose the 13 year average since it more accurately describes the mean reverting level over the past 13 years. Uh, you can see in about 2009 is when Richmond disposed of its, its uh, large holding in BATS and we assumed the current business and operating model. We saw the uh, spikes in EV EBITDA over the past uh, five years, but specifically over the past two years uh, due to high revenue numbers, which was due to pent up demand unwinding. We do not foresee this to uh, happen again in the foreseeable future. And, and this has caused us to, to adjust our model uh, and, and our mean reverting long term average. For our valuation, we have intrinsic value of 159 Rand and a price of 174 Rand. As we said, implies a 8.5% downside and we recommend a hold. This is informed by a bear base and bull case weighting of 40, 40 and 30%. Uh, we assume this weighting due to uh, historically high sensitivity, cyclical sensitivity, a lack of growth, growth catalysts, specifically relative to peers which are enjoying fairly high organic growth in the Chinese frontier market. We also then saw in the recent set of results, uh, fairly high sensitivity to results misses and the existing likelihood of future fair value write downs, which would also then in the future have a, uh, a strong uh, a downward 
uh, or depressive effect on, on the share price. Thank you for listening. Uh, to place a trade, please speak to your financial advisor or contact our trading desk.